Prepare for trouble. And make it double. To protect the world from devastation. To unite all duelists within our nation. To denounce the evils of truth and love. To extend our reach to the stars above. Undead. Weatherman. Team 6K blasts off at the speed of light. Surrender now or prepare to fight. Me out. What's up? What's the weatherman here with a brand new box review? And I am also with my boy Undead, obviously. And we're here to talk about this new box, Deep Emotion. We're pretty much just going to be talking about uh, if this box is relevant enough, if this box is good, if it's worth your time to invest in this box. So without any more to do, <laughs> any more ado, we're just going to jump right into this. And we're just going to talk about whether this box is worth playing or not. So for starters, I'm going to be talking about portions of the box and Undead will be talking about other portions of the box. So what I'm going to be talking about you are wise is a couple of the things that I see here that are really great. For one, we have got live twins in the game. We have got Team Rocket in the game. That's pretty dope. One of my favorite decks on Master Duel. Um, I really enjoy live twins. Um, it doesn't seem like we have the whole archetype, but we do have a lot of it main deck wise. Um, we have enough to have a one card combo with this deck. So the way that this deck works is you just normal summon one of the live twins. It specials the other live twins and then bam, one card combo. You just go into your link to plays going into the other uh, evil twins that they gave us that I'll be going into later. Um, but blue and pink essentially just have the same effect of just summoning the other one from the deck. Um, we've got Paleozoic Dinomiscus. This is really dope. This is going to be really dope, obviously, for pure paleo, which Undead will go into a lot more later. Um, but this is obviously great for TGs um, because of set Delta and uh, the version of the deck that we play with the paleo cards. This is also great for blue eyes. Um, this is going to be better than Karma Cut simply because of the fact of how the wording is in Karma Cut. Just for example, just one benefit. If Karma Cut gets negated, you would have had to discard your card already um, to target a card and banish it. Whereas Dino Miscus here, um, it does not. We would target the card. If they negate it, we wouldn't have discarded yet, so you wouldn't need to discard. So this is pretty much acting like Karma Cut, but it is a better Karma Cut. In fact, it also targets face-up cards on the field, not just face-up monsters. So we could actually even hit a face-up back row with this Paleozoic Dino Miscus. So that's pretty dope. This is a really good card, probably a new staple for the game. It's going to be really good. Um, we've also got Effect Veiler here. This is pretty much what everyone's talking about. You know, what everyone's really hype about. We've get, we're getting more hand traps. We've got Effect Veiler in the game. Um, so this is one of the better hand traps. Um, this is probably going to be the best generic hand trap that we have in Duel Links. Every other hand trap is going to be a bit meta reliant you know dd crow relies on the meta that we're playing in specific decks lancier kind of relies on the meta we're playing in specific decks effect veiler is just a monster negate you can send this from your hand to the graveyard and target one effect monster your opponent controls negate the face up effects of that monster this is during your opponent's turn so you can't use it on your own turn which is pretty much the the drawback for it but pretty nice with this card now that this is in the game uh we can go second and actually disrupt our opponent who was going first uh, we'll be able to negate one of the effects they choose to activate as long as we open an effect veiler in our hand going second. So that's actually really dope. And we don't have any uh, call by or cross out or anything yet. So this is pretty much resolving every time. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. Uh, we've also got Blue Eyes Abyss Dragon in the URs. This is also really nice. Blue Eyes just got a new skill as well as uh, a new playset of alternatives. So I will be talking about the new skill in a little bit. Um, but for right now, Abyss Dragon is really nice. So when this is special, somebody to let us add a ritual spell or a polymerization from our deck to our hand, that in itself is pretty cool. Then during the end phase, we'll be able to add a level eight or higher dragon monster from our deck to our hand. And that could be anything. It could be um, Levianir is what a lot of people do in the TCG, you know, add a Levianir to hand um add one of the other chaoses to hand it's a dragon uh, we can add a blue eyes white dragon if we choose to we could add a alternative if we choose to we could add a uh ritual monster you know like the skill kind of wants us to do um, which i will talk about in a second i'm just gonna go over real quick and go over to that skill so blue eyes dimension is the new skill that they gave us during this duel if you have at least nine blue eyes monsters in your deck at the beginning of the duel you can normal summon slash set blue eyes white dragon without tributing you cannot special summon monsters except light dragon type monsters with levels and ritual monsters in addition the following effects can be used once per duel send two blue eye monsters from our hand and one from deck to the graveyard add a blue eyes white dragon or a monster reborn from our deck to our hand place a poly from outside of our deck 
to the bottom of the deck and if you activated this skill on turn two or later also place one blue eyes chaos max dragon in a chaos form so if we're doing this turn two or later we'll be able to summon our abyss dragon and not only use its effect to search for that chaos form but during the end phase be able to search for that chaos max dragon so this pretty much gives us a pretty good follow-up play to be honest um it gives us a pretty solid follow-up play maybe the best follow-up play in the game considering the chaos max dragon is a untargetable beef stick that does double piercing damage so <laughs> this may actually be a genuine thing for blue eyes this may actually make blue eyes a bit more relevant i do have a build in mind but we'll talk more about what the blue eyes deck looks like when we actually get all the stuff when i have the full play set of the three alternatives when we have the skill fully in the game when i have all the cards that's when we'll do uh we'll do the build there are a couple other things that are technically um support for blue eyes uh this effect valor right i brought up how dino miscus is pretty much effect uh support for blue eyes but also effect valor effect valor is searchable via sage with the eyes of blue sage allows you to search for a level one light tuner and effect valor is a level one light tuner so blue eyes can actually search for effect valor uh, during the combo, going into Spirit Dragon, in which Spirit Dragon is good enough, we can also search for that effect value. That's pretty nice. Um, our double Kisa kills right here. We've got Evil Twin Kisa kill and Evil Twin Lila. Um, this is really nice. These are the two links that you're going to go into with your live twins. Uh, Evil Twin Lila here pops a card, and then Evil Twin Kisa kill here draws a card. And this is pretty dope. That's pretty much what they do. The deck uses a one card combo, and you're able to kind of recycle these two bad boys, get your draw off for some card advantage, get your pop off, and kind of just keep doing that infinitely. But we don't don't have the other cards like trouble sunny and stuff which we'll probably get in the future not right now but that's fine um outside of that like i said undead will be talking about some of the cards that i'm skipping over um we've got nightmare cerberus nightmare cerberus is a card that could also potentially be played in live twins um could also be played in other decks it's just part of the nightmare package this card has been here but it was in a selection box that is just now in a regular box this allows us to target a special summon monster our opponent controls in the main monster zone and destroy it pretty nice just like every other nightmare has the same nightmare effect if we can draw a card if it's co-linked um you know in addition to how many are co-linked so pretty solid pretty nice um, as far as the rares go, we've got more support for live twins. We've got secret password. Secret password says add a live twin or evil twin spell trap from our deck to our hand. And if we control a kiss a kill monster and control a Lila monster, we can add an evil twin monster from our deck to our hand instead. So this card is amazing and master duel and, you know, TCG, OCG. However, in Duel Links, I actually don't think it'll be that playable because we don't have uh, a Sunny Snitch. And without Sunny Stitch, Sunny Snitch, that's what we we use home to search for Snitch, so we can search for our monster. But without, um, without, I mean, we use Password to search for Snitch, so we can search for our monster. Without Snitch, I don't know how relevant home is. I mean, Password. I don't know why I keep saying home. Maybe it's because the card we are going to be playing is home, and it's so hilarious because I wouldn't have thought about this card being hit in Master Duel, but in Duel Links, this card is actually probably going to be hit one day. So we don't have Snitch. So how are we going to be having our extra live twins? Well, we've got our live twin home not only could we normal summon one of those two live twins which you got home which would just allow you to special summon one from the deck and as long as you control no other monster that's the way they work if you control no other monster you'll summon the other one so you can use home summon one you control no other monster summon the other so we pretty much already have six copies of live twins if we want we could have nine copies of live twins if we want having the home uh having the password search for the home which can summon the live twins so we could play nine total live twins you can play six total live twins if you want um as well as the fact that we did get a couple traps we've got the twin present here don't think twin present is really relevant got to be honest with you um if you are going to play a live twin trap i would instead of playing that one say to pick the uh evil twin gg easy Tribute to Kiss a Kill or Lila Monster and activate one of these effects. When a card or effect is activated that would destroy a card in the field, you can negate the effect. And then you can target a Kiss a Kill or Lila Monster you control. It gains attack equal to the original attack of a tributed monster until the end of this turn. So the reason why this is somewhat relevant is because the uh the link to Kiss a Kills, Evil Twins, they actually resummon each other. Lila and Kiss a Kill, it'll resummon it from the grave. So it doesn't really matter if you tribute one, and you're gonna have both on the field anyway. So maybe this is worth playing, but I don't believe the other trap is worth playing. Um, so with that being said, I've pretty much covered uh, all the parts of the all the parts of the box that I want to cover. I mean, here's a bingo machine go, but we all know bingo. I'm not about to sit and explain bingo to you guys. Uh, so I've pretty much explained all the portions of the box that I'm going to explain. Uh, Undead will be going over the rest of it just real quick, though. I just wanted to let you guys know that we are starting a new 
rating system um, for our reviews. So personally, just to let you know on what my rating is specifically for this box, I personally rate this box a four star out of five. But Undead may agree. He may disagree. He may rate it a bit higher. He may rate it a bit lower. We'll see. And we'll find out what that Team 6K rating is at the end. So I'm going to be sending you guys over to Undead. Your boy Weatherman is signing out. Well, guys, that was some deep analysis from Weatherman. It's making me emotional. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! I know that Weatherman is going to take Blue Eyes to tier 1 status off rip, so stay tuned for that. But for now, I want to talk about Altergeist real quick. Before this box, there were a couple other Altergeist cards in the game, but not really enough to make a deck with, despite people's best efforts. But now, as it tends to happen, whenever we get an archetype that Konami really, really wants us to play, we get a new event character with gate rewards and level up rewards and a card trader card to go alongside the Altergeist cards in this box. Damn it, Konami, we get it. You want us to play Altergeist. If you're unaware with how the deck works, it's essentially a spellcaster link deck that focuses on maintaining card advantage and recycling resources to control the duel until you eventually get to an incredibly powerful game state. And the deck happens to synergize really well with traps too. Its own traps, but also regular traps. So this is meant to be played as a relatively small main deck package with a whole bunch of traps to interrupt the opponent, while the monsters provide you with different forms of incremental advantage as well. I think that this deck is going to be really successful because one of the big issues that trap control decks have is that they tend to run out of gas if they get blown out. It's a lot harder to blow this deck out since all of its cards have one way or another to give you pluses in the long game. Just make sure that you're playing the event that's currently happening though because the character unlock and the cards you get from the game are only temporary. They will come back eventually but it is best to get everything now so you don't have to wait ages for its return. It is worth noting that Melusik, a great removal and floating piece for the deck, is limited to three meaning that you can't play three of this and still play the limited to three traps. I feel like if you're going to release a deck focused around traps, you should let them play traps. It's alright. We still have some other traps that are good, but not limited to three, like personal spoofing that is made for this deck. You can get from the card trader, and there's always warning point and needle ceiling, which may go well with this deck too, since some of the altergeists can float into more card advantage. This is a link deck. Just keep in mind that you aren't always going to be getting link plays off in that early game. The links often serve as ways to generate advantage in some way or another in the long game, which this deck is very good at getting to. If you feel like like Yu-Gi-Oh is too fast, you should probably pick up this deck, as this deck's definitely gonna have longer, grindier duels. Speaking of traps though, like Weatherman talked about earlier, this box actually comes with its own super good trap, Paleozoic Dynamiscus. It's like Karma Cut, but the discard is part of the effect instead of the cost, so if it's negated, you don't discard anything. This might be good in Altergeist, but it's definitely gonna be good in Blue Eyes and TGs. But you know, this was actually the last Paleozoic trap that the Paleozoic archetype was waiting for. And we have almost all the Paleozoic extra deck monsters now too, so there is a chance that Paleos are going to be playable alongside potentially the Frog Engine uh, or maybe even the Live Twin Engine. There's a deck that might be competitively viable that you will pretty much only need to go through this box for. If you go through this box three times, you'll have pretty much everything you need from Magic Keys. I'm pretty sure this is a Kingdom Hearts reference, but I'm not certain. You guys can let me know in the comments. This archetype focuses around using level 4 normal monsters, using them to summon cards from most of the different summoning mechanics, and the monsters you summon using them gain benefits based on the attributes of the normal monsters you've used. The best example here is Transferal Mine. Anytime your opponent summons a monster with the same attribute as a monster in your grave, you get to blow up that opponent's monster, and that isn't once per turn either. So you can keep blowing up their monsters on summon as long as you have the right attributes engraved. So you could potentially build your deck around this effect and get every attribute engraved somehow, but realistically, chances are you aren't going to be fighting against every attribute in the game. Water and Wind are pretty uncommon in the meta overall, not completely a relevant by any means. But you'll be fine most of the time if you can get a light, dark, and earth engraved, and if you can get a fire in there too, that's also pretty good. And if you wanted to play this in tournaments, you could potentially have the attributes you're missing in the side deck, so you can side them in depending on the matchups too. The great thing is about this deck, though, is that this one super cool interrupt of synchro isn't even the deck's only interruption. Since the deck can make level 8 synchros, you could also make a guts next to this. And the deck also has a super searchable counter trap that negates back row, like an MST that would target it or another back row or a book or a chalice that would target your synchro, and then after negating that spell or trap, it applies a lingering effect that makes any monster your opponent
opponent summons for the turn the attribute of your choice. So you don't even have to set up the attributes you need. You could just say an attribute you have engraved and your opponent's monsters will all get blown up by the transferal mine. That's not even all the deck does though. There's just a lot of benefits you get in this deck and I'm looking forward to playing it. This box also has three selection box reprints. So Mind Control, Radiant and Nightmare Cerberus are all available to free to play players at last. And honestly, if nothing else, you should really go into this box for at least one copy of Cerberus. Everybody's got to have one. S-Force got some support as well. I've always believed S-Force was a really solid deck and it really is. You could definitely get to cog with it, but these new cards could potentially push it further. Dog Tag summons itself from hand if your opponent summons a monster, which can be helpful if you need to complete your columns to finish up your S-Force lockdown. And the deck's got a new board wipe as if it didn't have enough already. Weatherman talked about the new Blue Eyes skill to give a bit of context for the Blue Eyes support and at the same time as that skill we are also getting a new Code Talker skill and a new Hero skill. The Hero skill lets you normal summon Neos and you Bell without tributing and it gives you an effect anytime you normal summon one of them. You either send you Bell from your field to the grave to put an evolved you Bell form onto the field, or you can search a Neos or Super Poly from your deck, or a Miracle Contact from outside of your deck. The whole point of this skill is basically to try to fusion summon elemental hero Neos Kluger, who burns the opponent for half the attack power of the monsters it battles, making him great for dealing damage and making him difficult to attack into. And if he leaves the field, he summons a Neos Wise Man from the deck, ignoring summoning conditions. Neos Wise Man is ordinarily pretty bad to summon, but cheating him out like this is cool. Neos Wise Man is indestructible by card effects and after damage calculation you can gain life points equal to the monster it battles defense and you can burn the opponent for that monster's attack. So we got a bit of protective floating and burning and life gain tall strategy going here to help us get into a follow up play. We could potentially normal summon you Bell and use a skill to search Neos if we have a way to fuse them or if we have Neos we can normal summon it to search for a way to fuse and the fact that the skill isn't once per duel means that we could summon a Neos on a follow up turn to search super poly to break the opponent's board and OTK. So there is a strategy going on here but I don't know just yet if this is going to be a valuable deck in the meta but it's definitely playable and pretty cool. The new cyber skill before we talk about what it does I just just want to say that you can't summon anything other than dragon type fusion monsters and cybers monsters so you can still link summon it's just that you can't summon anything other than cybers unless it's a specifically a fusion dragon opening you up to play potentially borrow furious but anyway if you have a cybers clock dragon in your extra deck you can return a cyanet fusion or a cybers monster from hand to deck to search a clock wyvern and a cyanet fusion basically giving you a one card fusion since you can take any cybers turn it into the fusion spell and clock wyvern normal summon the clock wyvern and have it make a token turn the token into a link one then fusion summon the cybers clock dragon but it actually goes further than that because the second effect of the skill lets you change a normal monster on your field into a stack reviver i think that in this scenario the token that clock wyvern summons is considered a normal monster so you can turn that into the stack reviver who if used as link material lets you revive a level four or lower cybers like your clock wyvern in defense mode so you can actually get more bang for your buck if you link summon before fusion summoning and the slide net fusion also lets you use link monsters as fusion material from the grave so it's even more gravy on top and since it does the skill can actually put a deco talker in your grave too so that you can use that as the fusion material and have the monsters you are using to get these plays going used for other potential plays. The Clock Dragon himself though is an SR in this box who on summon mills cards from your deck to the grave up to the link rating of the link you use to summon him. And if he does, he gains a thousand attack for each. So he's going to be a pretty big boy. While you control the link monster, this guy also redirects all targeting effects to himself and all attacks towards himself. And of course you wouldn't want to battle somebody with such a large attack value, but if you remove him by card effect, he gets to search any spell. Not any spell from the archetype just any spell at all it could be monster reborn it could be sign fusion it could be mu yan curry for all i care but regardless this guy's probably searching for something that is probably going to help their follow-up play this skill has a couple more things i haven't mentioned but there's already a game plan brewing here and there's actually more cyber support in the box that might make this deck really cracked and some that might even be used in other decks like proxy f magician which is like a polymerization that you can summon from the extra deck cyber's players are about to have a field day with this box and with this skill and the crazy thing is they don't even need to go through this box very much to be real since the skill searches for clock wyvern you could probably just go through the box one time to get one clock wyvern one clock dragon and the low rarity cybers cards that you need i am kind of cool with the fact that we got such complicated skills for something like clock dragon who otherwise might never see play but how many hero skills do we have to have at this point 
point, bro. Next up, we're gonna get one that sets three super polys to the field and draws three cards for the cost of discarding one hero. These hero skills are ridiculous, Konami. Heroes do not need 37 skills, while the rest of us might have one or two skills if we're lucky. When I look at this box, I see two and a half decks that are playable without needing to touch any other boxes and a bunch of support that makes a big difference to the decks they are supporting. And five whole staples. Bro, this box has five staples, dude. Me personally, I feel like this box is five stars out of five. But I understand where Weatherman is coming from with his evaluation of four stars out of five. These scores together make this box's 6k score a 4.5 stars out of five. Honestly, we both agree that this is a box everybody should be going through. That Veiler is something everybody needs to get their hands on. It's the next big staple that you're probably going to see in every deck. But anyway, guys, that's how we feel about the box. Let us know how you feel about it. And if you like the video, then slap like now. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that bell to get notified every time we make a new video and we've been team 6k blasting off again hey why they gotta hate on me i done got me a quarter million views and they still saying they low key they ain't want to come work with the kid but i'm flexing with zay on beats how they ask for a spot at the gym but they leave all the weight on me i don't ask them to wait on me they would ask where they gonna be with a song if they wanted the weather man i ain't asking to pay no fees she was homeless and needed a spot i ain't asking to pay no lease I ain't ask her to say no please. I ain't ask her to make no cheese. Scream fake, but it ain't on me. Got clean, so it ain't no streets. Why green if it ain't no keeps? Brought cream, so it ain't no beef. My team say it ain't no chief. My demon, they hang on me. They seemingly ain't no peace. I seen him, he ain't no beast. For